Hello. I found out what was in the box, but stuff still happened. So what's up? If you remember way back to the before times in April of this year, I talked about some people stealing a whole bunch of dimes, two million of them out of the back of a truck in Philadelphia. How about an update on that? Recently unsealed indictments around this event are charging four men with theft of government money, among other things. They also stole seafood and booze. They just kind of like went at it at all these trucks that were in this parking lot. And they're like, oh, hey, crab legs. Nice. Reportedly, they sold off the crab legs and other perishables. And then they tried to exchange those dimes at like banks and coin star machines, but they did not get particularly far before getting caught. So yeah, not the kind of situation you want to find yourself in, walking into a government courtroom being charged with stealing from the government. This never would have happened if they simply stole quarters. Boy, howdy, them auto workers sure are united. The United Auto Workers strike continues to grow as there are now a total of 41,000 striking auto workers. This past Monday, 6,800 additional workers walked off the job at a Stellantis factory that works on the Ram line of pickup trucks. They've joined the picket line and have bolstered the numbers of employees demanding better pay. The corporation CEOs are digging in their heels and continuously lowballing them. But to quote our favorite guy, the UAW president, Sean Fain, quote, we've got cards left to play and they've got money left to spend fucking love this guy. The UAW represents about 150,000 people. And again, only 41,000 are currently striking. This is about a third the size that it could be. What they are asking for is simple, equitable pay after record profits from all of these companies given the work they do for them. The simple fact that workers have to band together and demand better pay in a world where companies are making far more money than before without raising wages concerns me. Weird how fetishizing economics and financial gain does not result in prosperity among the working class. And it's weird how in 2023, there's an owning class to begin with. Could have sworn that I read some stories in history class about how that's not great for the people. Since last we spoke, House Republicans have nominated a third Republican speaker. And then they nominated a fourth Republican speaker because the third one already dropped out. Y'all, this is just an aside. There have been so many helicopters just all the time around me recently. I'm very tired of having to pause waiting for helicopters to pass by so that you don't hear me going, hey, let me tell you about the stuff that's happening. Anyway, yesterday, House Republicans nominated Tom Emmer, the majority whip, as their potential next speaker of the House. Three hours later, he was out. He acknowledged that there was no way he was going to get the votes that he needed. He barely got the support to begin with in a closed door vote. And so he was out. I want to note, and I'm not defending Emmer here, but some of the holdouts against him cited his support for a bill that would acknowledge same-sex and interracial marriage as a reason why they couldn't vote for him. Federally acknowledging gay and interracial marriage was a deal breaker. Additionally, Trump said that Emmer was not MAGA and quote, not loyal enough. What is this authoritarian bullshit? Hey, saying that a politician is not loyal enough to a specific movement leader is not okay. That's not a thing you want happening. Why are we talking about loyalty to a single person? What the fuck is going on? I mean, I know what's going on. It is a rise of fascism. But when you say that, people get all up in arms that it's hyperbole. It's not hyperbole. The ultra conservative movement leader in this country is evaluating potential politicians based on their loyalty to him and his movement, not how well they represent the people, not what they're doing to make the world a better place, but their loyalty to him. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Anyway, after he pulled out, they have since nominated Mike Johnson, some jabroni from Louisiana. It's not looking good for him either. We shall see. And before you either hit me with the both sides or claiming favorites or whatever, fuck Democrats too. Republicans are also fascists, while the Democrats enable them. And no, I'm not a centrist. The UN Secretary General has issued a statement calling to fucking stop bombing Gaza. He has called for an immediate ceasefire, citing the, quote, epic suffering that is ongoing in Gaza as Israel continues to pummel them with bombs and blockades. This is collective punishment for the citizens of Gaza after the Hamas attack on Israel. And collective punishment is a war crime. The call for a ceasefire cites the inability to even get aid into the region and the incredible level of human suffering that is currently being placed on this population. Civilians have been killed by the hundreds daily with the death toll approaching 6,000 
with at least 2,360 children being killed so far. Hospitals in the region don't have power or supplies and can no longer treat people. Civilians are being told to go seek refuge in specific areas that then are targeted by Israel strikes. And so over a million human beings who have been displaced from their home have nowhere to go. They can't leave the strip and they can't seek shelter. Most Western governments are staunchly behind Israel in this conflict because they see it as a requirement to have a strong Western military foothold in the region. And so Western support of Israel is strategic. They have done the math. They did the calculations and they don't care. That is not reflective of the will of the people at large though, as worldwide protests against this ongoing ethnic cleansing have broken out in droves. On this day in 2001, Microsoft released Windows XP, our favorite operating system. Hallmarks of Windows XP include the Rolling Hills desktop background that has reached meme status, as well as the fact that virtually every installation of Windows XP was riddled with viruses. I mean, at least if it was your family computer. It, it was probably riddled with viruses. Lightning round. An NSA agent has pled guilty to attempting to sell information to Russia when it turns out the Russian agent he was trying to sell to was actually an undercover FBI agent. An off-duty airline pilot attempted to sabotage an in-flight plane and now faces over 80 counts of attempted murder. Washington State Senator Jeff Wilson has been charged with illegal possession of a firearm in Hong Kong. At the airport, he was caught with a pistol in his carry-on bag. He didn't pick up that gun in Hong Kong. He flew there with it in his carry-on bag after flying out of Portland International Airport where the TSA did did not catch the gun in the carry-on bag. Hold on to your attention spans, cause TikTok is now testing 15 minute long videos on the platform. And finally for today, a wax sculpture of Dwayne The Rock Johnson is getting revised after they made his skin way whiter than he actually is. Very unsettling to look at. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Stuff Keeps Happening. Head to stuffkeepshappening.online for sources, bonus content, and a massive bag of barbecue chips. I would love it if you would leave a review on whatever podcast app you use. It really helps the show. Don't forget to share this around with your friends and family and loved ones and enemies. My name is Endeavorance. I'll be back on Friday. Take care and be well.